Hello, my name is Nelda Antonovaita and I work in Davide Januzzi Group uh, in the Physics Department in Freie Universiteit in Amsterdam. Well, we study mechanical properties of various biological samples. Um, my specific project uh, is uh, brain, brain tissue. Um, so we have, um, uh, we are using feral top indenter, uh, which can perform indentation. Uh, so you can push on the sample and based on mechanical models, you can extract what are the elastic properties, what are viscous properties and so on. So we have a manipulator which can move in XYZ directions over the sample. And then we have a piezo for the precise movement of the probe. And here is an attached probe. Uh, so it has a ferrule, uh, it's a piece of glass uh, with the um, cantilever uh, at the end and also the sphere at the tip. Uh, and then you have an optical fiber over here which reads out the position of the cantilever. So when it's bending, you see how much it's bending. Um, we approach uh, the sample, which is mounted in this chamber, uh, and then we can perform indentation by scanning over uh, the sample. And at the same time, we can look at the microscope underneath to see which brain region we are measuring and how it looks like, uh, and use that information uh, to map to correlate mechanical properties with the actual structure of the brain. There is a problem, first of all, to how to characterize the brain tissue, because uh, various groups have tried and results between the studies are contradicting each other. So we don't really know what are the mechanical properties of the brain. And that's because it's a really complex mechanically uh, material because it's really soft. It has 80% of fluid in it. Um, so as a physicist group, we looked at it from mechanical perspective to like a material and how, like, how we can characterize it properly. So we, uh, instead of using static methods, which were previously used, we um, developed our setup that it can do dynamic measurements, which means uh, you can oscillate uh, the probe and get not only the elasticity, but also viscosity um, terms. So uh, we joined the neuroscience group and they're like, we have these nice manipulators that they use for the patch clamping. And we needed uh, the scanning system over the sample. So before we had a different kind of um, manipulators, they were either manual or not so precise, while well, for the brain you really need high resolution mapping. And um, because our probe is sensitive to any mechanical noise, if you clap, if you walk, if you talk, it will pick it up. So we needed this, uh, the manipulator to be also really, really stable. Uh, and we tried it and it was perfect. Uh, because we could also easily write the lab view codes to control it. So we can say, okay, it has to move in this kind of way, it has to approach and it can move over the sample, all in an uh, automatic way. So it's all pre-programmed. Um, and we can also get all the locations, uh, information on the locations uh, afterwards. So we read out the positions of the manipulator, then we can, that's how we can uh, draw exactly where indentation was performed uh, and then use that to map the, the staining images and so on. So it has to be really precise and scientific. Uh, these manipulators really help to implement that. So we mostly interested in hippocampus uh, because it's really heterogeneous. So we wanted to find the relationship between the mechanical properties and brain structure. So which components of the brain are stiff ones and which components are soft ones. 
Uh, so hippocampus is really heterogeneous. It has really uh, a high density of cell layers and also the sparse ones. Uh, there's also the, some white matter. So we have um, a perfect region to study. So we are making the maps over the hippocampus and then afterwards we do the staining for different components and see whether um, there's some kind of correlation. And we did find so we were happy about it because previously uh, people were not able to get a clear mechanical map that would correlate to the structure while we did. Uh, so that's kind of convincing that our uh, indentation profile, indentation method that we are um, proposed to use is actually working and we are characterizing the tissue in a proper way. Yes, so here you see um, the mechanical map that we obtained. Um, in this picture, you see the inverted microscope image of hippocampus, uh, the red dots indicating different indentation locations that we do with the, by scanning. Uh, and here is the storage modulus map. So you see that the regions with the uh, dark color are really soft and the regions with bright yellow color, they're much stiffer, and that correlates to the actual structure of the brain. So these really soft regions are the ones that uh, have really high density of cells, and the regions with low density of cells are much stiffer. So this is our main important finding because people have thought previously that the cells in the brain, the neurons, should be the ones making the brain stiff, but actually we found the opposite. So that was surprising, um, but also nice, so we can use this information uh, for the future studies. So the difficulty was, first of all, to having this, your sample alive. So we joined the neuroscience groups to collaborate with them, where they do uh, electrophysiology, and then they showed us the way to prepare the sample in order to keep it alive for like six hours. So how to slice it, how to perfuse it so it stays alive and it's flat so we can really measure over it. Uh, the next challenge was the control of our indentation profile. Uh, so to implement the oscillations in, in, uh, in our profile. So what we do, we indent up to a certain depth then keep it constant and then oscillate at that tip and that requires a lot of control in the device itself. There are a lot of um, neurodegenerative diseases where the structure in the brain changes. So if the structure changes, it means the mechanical properties will change as well. Now neurons and astrocytes are sensitive to their mechanical environment. So they will respond to the changes in their mechanical environment and probably um, that contributes to the disease progression itself. So this pathway, how this actually works, is really unknown and it's now a hot topic. Uh, there's a lot of cell research trying to understand like if you culture neurons and astrocytes on uh, soft or stiff substrates, they will respond differently. Um, uh, there are a lot of studies done on Alzheimer, for example, the different uh, mechanical techniques. So we are progressing there, but it's still um, only the first studies that report these findings. Our dynamic method, it's um, rather new and it uh, picked up a lot of interest in other research fields, for example, and studying the mechanics of the paintings and more specifically the crack propagation. So the paintings are also viscoelastic, there's viscous and elastic component and uh, so you want to use dynamic method and uh, there's a collaboration between our group and Rijks uh, Museum in Amsterdam where they are trying to study crack propagation in, in the paintings. My colleague gets samples of the little paint uh, and then they are using the, as well, scientific manipulator to really map precisely in high resolution the properties of the, the paintings.